The TED by Chris Steele Perkins and Richard Smith. It measures just over eight inches by 11 inches. Softback, first edition 1979, approximately 120 pages, 69, 70 images. Front cover, and there's an image on the back. I think this, with that, there's about 69, that's about 70, 70 images. Published by Travelling Light and Exit. The name Exit, I presume, comes from Chris Steele Perkins' association with the Exit Photography Group, which is part of the survival programmes, which we covered in an earlier video. This book's been published three times. This is the first edition, 1979. The second edition, which was published by Dewey Lewis in about 2002, I think has about 128 pages and a lot more pictures. So they reissued it and added some unseen photographs from the series. And then it was published again in 2016. I think one of them publications was to coincide with an exhibition of the TEDs by Chris. The second edition, I think is very similar to this, with the same typography. This might be in white. And the third edition, I think it's more italic, the, the writing on them, and it's hardback. This is obviously the softback. So get back to this. The book came about with a commission by New Society magazine, which commissioned Richard and Chris to spend some time documenting the, the TED revival in the 70s. I love this book. I think it's fantastic. I think it's well done. I think for the time, 1979, Obviously, it's beautifully observed. There's some great stuff. And, and the pictures themselves are quite interesting. And I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at the format of the book and, and work through it. I've got to be very careful with it because it's very tender. It's very sort of fragile. So here we got Crystal and Richard. And we've got Travelling Light Exit. We've got the acknowledgements and the publication bits there dedicated to Mary. And then the intro. Now, the pictures... The majority of the pictures, and as you will see, none of them are dated within here, but most of them, I think, were shot around 1976. What is the book about? It's obvious it's about the TED culture. The 70s was the period of the, the TED revival. I'm aware that there was a revival in the 60s. I'm not quite an authority on TEDs and I won't even go into it. All I will say is what I know and, and what I can make of this book. So what is this about? This is about what is referred to in the TED world as plastic TEDs. The, these were the guys um, of the 70s generation who were classed as, they weren't the originals, they were the, the plastic TEDs, the sort of new TEDs. Now in this, there are the original TEDs within this and, and, and twined people who, pref who claim and were part of the scene in the 50s, the much older generation. And I think this book more or less concentrates on the this 70s younger new generation, totally different to what the 50s TEDs were. So let's just run through it roughly and I'll give you an, a sort of outline to what the book's at sort of how it's formatted. So there's, th there's three different styles of images in here. There's this um, there's this sort of 35 mil black and white repertage with some port rates and it's designed in a way where you'll get some full page bleeds and you'll also get a sort of vertical and I'll just find them there. There's a sort of vertical format. There is a lot of verticals in here, and, and I find it quite brave to do a lot of verticals, especially away from portraiture, which is quite interesting. So we've got the repertage style. Then we've got this sort of almost Richard Avedon style um, group shot types. And then we've got a total, diff a total change of images. Let me find them which is somewhere here. Yeah, we've got this square format, which I love. I love something in each of the different styles. I particularly like the, the quietness of the square format. I love the approach here. I think it's quite a sort of Richard Avedon approach to it. I, I, I think it's a lovely 
documentation. I think it's nicely set up simple, but it's just giving you the person and the individuals and it, it's sort of couples and mainly couples and things like that. And then you've got the, the repertoire. So let's talk about this fun cover. I think this fun cover is done on purpose because it's a little bit edgy. It's a little bit aggressive in a sense. It's, it's sort of this guy looking at the camera with a cigarette out of his mouth. I'll just pull this down a little bit. It's given you that, that sort of Ted Edge, if you want to call it. It's, even though I presume there was violence and, and gang culture and, and all that sort of stuff in the 70s, but the reflection on the Teds of the 50s, which was a sort of really violent, tribalistic gang warfare and attitude and stuff going on with the Teds, and I think this, this particular picture is sort of reflecting the more aggressive approach to the Teds. For me, I think it's on purpose because I think there's other pictures in here which would have offered a much more 70s view of the Teds. But some may argue, this is my point of view. There'll be plenty of people watching this, disagreeing and, and whatever. This is just my view and my perception. So let's go through it. All right, Richard's text is obviously here. We have... Now, all the way through it, we have Richard's text at, and then obviously with the pictures and then at the back we have the bibliography, I guess, the uh, references to within here, within Richard's text, some of the quotes and some of the source material which he found in the, the Times, which is dated from 1956-52 because a lot of this text in here is covering the history and, and the sort of going back through the 50s and, and giving you some sort of reference, historical reference to the involvement and the, at the time, the contemporary lifestyle of the Ted. So this is East of Eden. This is literally going into post-war, the Ted, post-war Britain, and the, the sort of birth of the Ted and looking at the Ted's in Australia, America, Japan, and just looking at the fashion, the, the, the delinquency, the, the attitude and the fighting and stuff. This is a sort of introduction. Dream, dream, dream here is literally looking at the war children, how it evolved, how the 50s became a different time, a more affluent time for the, for, for the working classes and people and how fashion and, and things were evolving. People had more money to spend. Lehman Anger was talking about 1956, which was apparently the year of the Ted's gang warfare, tribalism, violence. So it's a nice sort of introduction before we really move into the picture. She wore leopard skin and her tits were big. Just looking at the gang identities, the riots, and then the sort of more or less the end of the Ted's around 58, I think with national service and stuff like that and how the sort of national service changed the, and sort of brought down a lot of the, the, the Ted culture, changed the, the Ted guys coming in, going on national service and they were coming out the other end totally different. Now, again, I'm not quoting, I'm just roughly getting a gauge off what's written here. So you can argue that later. I want to look at the pictures and the structure and the narrative and and we'll just give you a quick insight into the words. So we've got Kenny, Stan the Man. I can't tell you where a lot of these are. I presume some of them are in London, but it does go into other places where the, the, the guys were and girls were geographically. And there's a lot of, I love this vertical. I think it's quite, it's quite not, I say it's brave. It, it, it's interesting doing a lot of this and putting a lot of this vertical repertoire in, I may be wrong, nice double page spread. I'll just try and bring this down a little bit. Here you got here, they've got a little less conversation, which I think is looking more at this sort of 60s revival, how it became a little bit nostalgic and Bill Haley was prominent again. It wasn't so violent, the 60s was a bit more hippie-ish I guess and they were just looking at um, the sort of state of play 
in the 60s with the Ted culture. Serious 70s. I think, again, we both these things are, are looking at the resurgence of the music in terms of the bands like Shwaddy Waddy, Rockabilly, Shaken Stevens, all these sort of new, I guess, plastic Ted's really. And, and But it was a sort of resurgence of the music. And this book is about that. It's about the nostalgia. It's about the people who were keeping it alive, the people who, are, who were around at the time but are still around now and doing discos and, and keeping it sort of shows and get-togethers and clubs and stuff like that. And then the introduction to this new generation. And this is sort of really nicely charted. I, I think some of the text is quite informative. If you get the book, you do really need to look at the text and that's why I'm talking about it because it is quite important. We've got the cover here. This is in... Um, the Red Deer in Croydon, and this is in Market Tavern. So there isn't, obviously, these things in some of them. This is a bit more informative. I love that shot. It's a really lovely shot. And again, about 1976. There we go. Some, I don't know where that is. I seem to have a little stain there. I'm not, I presume that's me, the book. I've never actually seen any of the Jerry Lewis books. I may buy the 2002. This book here, I, I actually saw online a week ago for £17, which I thought was pretty strange because it's worth a fair bit now. But check this out. You can probably find it, but you definitely pick up the Dewey Lewis books. They're all over the place and get it on the Dewey Light website or on a books or other online retailers. We've got um, Wild Angela and Bill Zinton. And then Harold Evans, and this is the sort of the revival and the uh, the sort of people who are still around. And this guy here, I think this was one of the few pictures which was shot in 1975. This is sunglasses, Ron Staples. This guy is the self-acclaimed, as it says in here, king of the Teds. He was doing the rock and roll revival discos and and stuff like that. There's a picture of him somewhere else and things, but again. We've gone on that vertical portrait, 35 mil. After all these years, again, this is how it's changing. It's all like community shows, raffles, just discussing how the TED culture's changed. This is in Portsmouth, lovely interaction. So I think this is a great book. I, I think for somebody who doesn't know anything about it, it just offers a glimpse into it. And for when it was published, 1979, I think it's a lovely historic piece. That's all Kent Road and Newcastle and Newcastle there. Lyceum in London, Adam and Eve in Hackney. As Chris is obviously getting around a little bit. And as you can see, there's sort of themes. There's a lot of togetherness on it. Man and man as well, but there's the love and stuff like that, which the love side isn't really associated with the 50 Teds as well. And this is a more sort of depiction of the coming together of community, in a sense. And you wouldn't sort of associate 50s Ted's with that girl boy, nice sort of kissing um, type of shop. I, I might be rambling on a bit, but I'm just trying to sort of work it all out in my head. Tongue tied Danny. That's tongue tied Danny. And that's tongue tied Danny there. I'll just drop this down a little bit. This thing here is called Flashback, this section of Richard's text. Again, just talking about the memorabilia, and I presume because it's 76, I'm not sure how old Danny is, whether he's plastic or he's an original, I'm not really sure. And this is just talking about the discos, memorabilia, get-togethers, just, you know, literally reflecting on that past culture again. The Loft, now I think The Loft, I think this is an introduction I think it's somebody called Desmond Terrell who, is, I think this is just literally an interview with, um, about a reflection of how the Teds have changed. It's just another insight. I presume the loft's a place. Um, now this is about Desmond Terrell and talking about his involvement with the police and, but I think this is just, this is sort of him, Richard, talking to different people as well. But this first bit here is about a guy called Desmond Terrell. 
these portraits, I love them. It, it is reminiscent of Richard Everton as well. I love them and, and they're beautiful. And I think it's a lovely mix. You've got the, you know, the sort of 35 mil repertage. You've got the, the, the horizontal, got the vertical style repertage, and then you've got these lovely, totally different style. He may have been doing it on purpose. He just, maybe it was a little bit of lapse in time and he went back to it and he shot it like this. I, I just think it's quite interesting. I love the neutral background. I love the way it's, it's there's no background. I, I like the way it's just focusing on the people. In a sense, it fits with the nostalgic approach. It's looking back at sort of more, these are the plastic Teds in a sense. And it's superb, absolutely beautiful. I, I, if this was a whole book like this, I would love these on their own. But and, and this is why I begin to think this is a really nice, clever book. And Chris is really good, you know. He's using a sort of a range of different styles while he's shooting this. And I'd love to see the bigger edit of this. Again, that sort of thing. And I wonder... I get a feel that this was shot around the back of a club or a pub. There's no dates on it or times or, or places on it. I wonder if he's gone to somewhere like the loft or whatever it was called, got these guys around the back of the entrance or on a sort of Ted's weekend away and he's got them all um, individually and shot them. Heatwave, this is literally reflecting back on the 60s, the 50s Ted, the D-mob suits, just about the fashion, the identity, just looking back again. And I think, obviously, I think now this makes sense where these are positioned and it's looking and talking to the old, older Ted who are around and, you know, looking at stuff and there's like interviews and stuff like that there. And that's 50s Flash. Now, I think this is going back to, let me remind him of my name. I think that's just... Sunglass Ron Staples, I may be wrong. I think the Confederate flag there, and this is the disco and stuff like that. And that's where we are now in the territory of the book. I'm not sure the dates of these, but as I said, I, I presume it's 76, 75, 77, that sort of period. We'll bring this down a little bit. Right, dancing, this is in Hull. Queen's Hotel, the Blue Ball, and Derby. So looking at the dancing, again, it's the sort of looking, and this is, a, you know, the, the sort of flashback, the retrospective nights and the parties and the discos and the, show, the shows. And in a sense, when you're covering Ted in the 70s, it's never going to be like it would have been doing it in the 50s. You're not looking for the flashpoints and the fighting and stuff because you, you're not really going to get them there. Even though 70s wasn't a sort of easy time, it was a quite a violent time, a lot of aggression and stuff. But I think as the Teds are, and what this book's not covering at all is that. And I think it's a nice reflection, insight, visually into that culture now, not what it's trying to pretend to be because none of this is pretending to be 50s none of it at all because what you've got in this book is 70s Ted's who were a group who were having fun with the music having fun with each other and enjoying it the 50s Ted's was a totally different thing and like I said I'm not an expert but this is what I'm getting from the book and what Richard's text is doing is giving you that insight into that hullabaloo, that aggression, that whole riot of the small part of the 50s, which was the sort of birth of the tell culture. So this book, if you're looking for fighting and aggression and all of that, you ain't going to find it. And that's not what this book's about. Such a great shot. Almost got it full bleed there. That's such a good shot. And I can't see any use of flashing it. I just think it's this guy here. It's a little bit brighter, but Black and white film's amazing, isn't it? I would presume it's a shot on Kodak 400 of some description. It's not grainy, so I presume it's still in the 400, 800 marker. You've got to remember that as well in the 70s, compared to what the black and white we're using now, it's a lot less sensitive than 
than it is now. It's much more evolved, the, the film. So these are a really good example. And, and now we've got, let me jump this up a little bit. We've got vertical again. Love it. It's exciting, you know. She's not scared to use verticals. I just think it's a very difficult format. When you're shooting reportage like this and capturing motion and people interacting, verticals are a hard one to, to, to do, you know. It's great again, look at that. So now we're going back to the text, the big night out. Trips away. Um, looking at the bands, the Zodiacs, looking at the Shazam, the Riot Rockers and stuff like that, just sort of reflecting on the bands and then we get back to the picture. So it's just intercutting with, with the images. Marching. Now, this is interesting, this one. I'm not sure who did it, but there was a think around, it doesn't have the date here, not that I can see. But anyway, this was about a petition which was drafted and set out, and I think they got about 80,000 signatures to get more rock and roll music played on the, on the radio. So as an insight there into that, now here is, I love these pictures, is the square format. Again, totally different, much quieter than the other stuff, the reportage style stuff and the, the verticals, a little similar to the quietness of the other style pictures like these. And that's so quiet. They're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I'm looking, to, I'm trying to work out what sh we shot them with because if you, on these little borders here, there's often a giveaway to the camera and I can't remember where they are, but you get like little grooves here to tell you. And like if there was a groove or something here, I could tell it was a Hasselblad or something like that. So I'm not really sure what you actually shot this on. I can't see there or there to what you actually took it on. I presume it was something like a Bronica. It could have been a Hasselblad, I may be wrong. And I'm not sure when these are shot. It's interesting, he's thinking about going in now to shooting square format. What changed the approach? Why did he all of a sudden go and shoot black and white square format? It's fascinating. And you can see now, if looking at the different style of pictures, how they've chosen or how Chris chose the front cover. Because obviously I think the book's more about this. I think it's less about that. But there's a lot of this and there's a lot of this lovely quietness coming together portraits. So it's interesting, none of this probably would have worked on the cover. Jailhouse John, what a name. Vivian Brown and Peter Kershaw. So good, look at this. Look at that, you got this here. Now, is that a picture or is that, what is that? It looks like a picture, but I'm trying to work out, are these the Ted's behind them? Good use of a day, available light. You can see with like the lack of detail in the blacks, it's just daylight, really good. Again, I would say daylight, curtains drawn, coming in. It'd be interesting to find out about that. Check the wallpapers out as well. John O'Neill's and family. It's interesting. Chris, has in, in the last couple of years, has done something similar with other people's living rooms and people's houses and stuff. So it's obviously something he was intrigued to do. Funnily enough, I did a shoot with Chris. I was his assistant once. He won't remember in the nineties, and I remember being in somebody's house shooting a portrait with them. It was a commercial job. I can't remember anything about it. Um, I haven't got my old records or tax details, so I can't even go back to the invoice and look at it. But my association, I've met Chris a few times. He won't remember me from Adam, but I have assisted him once. And it was in somebody's house taking a portrait like that. And that was about 20, 30 years ago, going north 
Ted's on the north, literally looking at the Ted culture in the north and what it meant and what it is now, uh, then in the 70s. It's a nice lot of good introduction text. So Richard Smith's text is so important to this book. Sometimes text is in that's just like near to here and there, but this really, if you want to get a sort of context, a sort of contextual awareness of all of this and what this book's about, then that's really important. And I think if you read the text, you get a better understanding of where the pictures are and what they're delivering and that they're not delivering a hard-edged Ted approach of violence and, and music and, and, and tribalism and stuff like that. It's a new type of tribalism. And again, more of the reportage. Some drunken shenanigans now. The car park, coming out of the pubs, a little bit of fun and happiness. No fighting, just togetherness. It's the end of a show. Be there, be square. Just looking at, again, talking about the plastic Teds, talking about Nottingham and the North, who's opened their sandwiches, looking at the Geordie Teds and looking at um, Bolden Colliery and places like that, just, again, reflecting back. And then you've got Go Down South End, literally, it speaks for itself, the away days and, and stuff like that. And here we go, obviously, looks like Blackpool or somewhere and all the Teds together, messing around, doing their stuff, looking for the, the music halls. And look at that relationship there, totally different to the 50s Teds. The togetherness, the boys and girls all together. And here it is. Now, it's like 50s America, isn't it? I, I'm so wrong about this, but I'm going to say it. It sort of feels like a Corny Island shoot. And I know I'll get critics for that, but I don't care, but I, I, this is my favourite shot in the book. It's just simple, just beautiful. It really is one of my favourite images. It's a simple shot, beautiful use of depth of field. It's just a sign of a good photographer, really. It's a strong image. Would it work on the cover? Maybe. But I just love that. I'd love this picture sort of behind a frame. It's just so gorgeous. My favourite picture in the book, in that sort of 35 mil style as well. Um, Deja Vu, I guess, is just going back, you know, looking at the the boys and the girls on the, on the, the days out, the end of a night. Look at that guy, he's just fantastic. Let me drop down on that. That's amazing. And at the end, don't follow me, I'm lost too. Back image, tattoo. Um, overall, I'm so pleased I've got the original. The second edition, third edition by Dewey Lewis is really available. It's on Dewey's website. I think the 2016 one definitely is. You can get either, get both. I'm gonna get the second edition, I think, because I wanna see what pictures are not left in. There's a shot somewhere, and uh, there, oh, I found it. It may be that shot. I know Chris is selling the contact sheets and you can get the contact sheets and the sort of build up to some of these shots. You can buy it on the Magnum website. You could buy it, if you ask Chris, I'm sure he can direct you and, and you can buy a sort of framed contact sheet of some of the TED series. It's wonderful. I love it. Really proud to have it. Wonderful book. Really good text by Richard. Some beautiful photography, different styles and caught within, within it. It's not about the violent Teds. It's about where Teds are at that particular time. Thank you for watching. Please leave some comments. I'll put some links for the book and some of the links for how you can buy the pictures and Chris's website and stuff on the Magnum website. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Please share. Remember, these views are just mine. I'm not always right. I just love photography. I love books and I'm a proud owner of this. Thank you. We are floored, we are bound down. See us, careless cold, see us, steal the dawn. We are stone. We are stone.
días 